Hello everyone, today I'm working on this uh, SD40-2. This is a hard to find uh, valuable engine. I looked uh, just before I started the video on the Kado uh, website. This is uh, no longer being produced. So uh, it's, uh, you have to grab one from another uh, collector used and uh, I suppose I could custom paint this but this area here is very hard to do so uh, sometimes in life it's okay to get help so I bought this from another collector these are really cool because they have ditch lights so that's really cool I really like that I uh, had to pay uh, good money for this. I had to pay a bid 150 bucks to get it. But the good news is it's got uh, DCC. So let's take a look inside. Uh, I used the box method for this. So there's my DCC board. Let me just give you a close-up of that. Sometimes they say uh, right on the board uh, who's the manufacturer. On this one, uh, it didn't say. Uh, so I'm going to want to uh, to clean the wheels on this before uh, I put the shell back on. You can tell this model was taken care of. Looks really good. There's a little bit of dirt here, so I'm going to wash this uh, with my toothbrush and some dish soap. So those of you who have been paying attention will notice the horn is missing. That's okay, I've got an extra horn right here. We're gonna start with that. On these, uh, the CN fans will know that on these, the horns are further down the car body. So on these CNs, the horns usually further down uh, the car body, but uh, because I used to buy my my trains new, I wanted them to look old. Now I want them to look new. I'm doing it uh, as it came out from Kado. That is the look that I'm going for. So I'm gonna keep that on. So in order to uh, work on the wheels, I have to remove my um, my DCC board and the previous owner put Kempton tape on this that's very good I'm gonna have to split it apart though to spread the frame so I can get to my wheels that's not really hard to do but I have to do it no choice And then to get to the wheels, what I like to do, you can pull on these straight out, they come out. But what I like to do is just drop the details, the side frame details, just drop them down a little bit. I do that to the front and the back. And that's gonna give me enough slack to just come in and spread out the frame that will release my trucks oh i need just a little bit more screwdriver that will release my trucks and let's do the front one as well you don't have to pry too too hard on this just enough to release it. Here we go. Now, if you pull too hard on this, you will detach the top part of the of the the truck what holds um, the worm gear in. And if you do that, your uh, your little worm gear, the little worm gear 
with the small bearings. It could fly off on you. There's my worm gear with the small bearings. So these, this one could fly off on you. It's really, really small. So that you could lose it in a crack of your floor or you could lose it uh, in a bunch of dust. It's really small, it's easy to lose. If that should happen to you, it's not the end of the world. Uh, Cuddle makes a replacement part for this. Reasonably priced. And you can just, uh, you just have to wait a little bit. Here's the part number, but it will uh, repair your engine. So thankfully uh, the two bearings are there. I'm happy for that. This engine was really taken care of. Everything looks good. Now since I have everything in my hands, I'm going to want to clean the wheels. So I'll just come in and pry on my side frames very gently to release this. Cuddle, they're getting uh, better and better actually. You know, unlike uh, some companies which have disappeared, they keep uh, innovating. You know, think of Kodak and Blockbuster. I mean, I sure, I'm sure they thought that Netflix was, was a joke when it first came out, but they stopped innovating and so here we are today. Taking my time with this. There's no rush. So these have a little bit of suspension in the way they are made. And let's have a look at this. The way they are made, they have a little bit of suspension. This engine is in good shape. The, um, the middle wheel here has a little bit of a suspension and they did that using the contact strips, which is smart. Then there's your contact strip. And then there's your suspension. So that's very cool stuff. That's why they run so good. And then your side frames. So then I can go ahead and clean this. This engine was really good to start with. So I don't know if it really did need to be cleaned. But since I have everything apart, I may as well. I'm not even sure the DCC uh, decoder is still good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble everything, test it on DC. And then if that works out, I can go ahead and uh, put the decoder back in. Wiki clean. I'm getting ready to place everything back together on the plastic parts, stuff like this. I don't, uh, I don't put any lubrication, but I am going to put a drop just in here in this little worm gear because it's metal against metal. I think that's going to help. just to show you what grand I like to use. So I even do, I, I do about one inch in a week like this. This bottle has lasted four years. So uh, that's pretty good. I can do a lot of engines with this. So these go back together exactly how they came out. Well, I'll start with the um, I'll start with the 
contact strips first and then I'll put the middle wheel that's going to hold my contact strips in place. So once I have that done, I can start bringing in uh, the other wheels. And there's a bit of lint there, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to take that out. And also you want the springy portion to go uh, to the outside of the engine. This is the inside of the engine. So you want that to be on the outside of the engine. And then just keep bringing your wheels in. The wheels are interchangeable. They don't have a, a, a place or a direction that they go into. They just fit uh, right in with the engine so once you got your wheels in make sure that they roll well and then we can put uh, the bottom of the the truck the longer part goes towards inside the engine these should fit right in nice and easy they should just snap in there all neat I think I'm hung up a little bit on that side And then you can test it with your finger, make sure everything's working and there's no resistance whatsoever. And then to reassemble the top of the worm gear, use the case here. The case fits everything really, really perfectly together. So you use that case and then you can put the rest of the side frames uh, together. Just like so. And there you have it. I'm gonna do uh, the, uh, the other side uh, off camera. So the fuel tank, if you wanna remove it, it's just like this, it just snaps out. And then let's take a look at uh, what's inside here. They have no screws. It's basically just the engine, cr the engine cradle, the motor cradle that keeps it together. Maybe have a little bit of uh, kept on tape yet. That's stuck. And then you have your motor. So this one looks uh, brand new. There's no need to do anything to it. So I'll just put the snaps back in, nice and easy. And I'll put the fuel tank back in, making sure that my contact strips are lined up. And I'm not putting the details on just yet. I still need to spread them out a little bit in order to get uh, my trucks in. Now. This system, it's meant for the people at the factory for them to go quickly. So all you need to do is take your hex, stick it in your um, flywheel, and you'll feel it go. Once it's in there, they'll just snap up just like so. And once they're snapped in, you're good to go. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. It's really quick. And then I can snap in my underframe detail. 
and I'm done. So I want to go test this out uh, on the siege to make sure everything's lined up properly. So I'm gonna put um, a, a DC board, it's from an ES44. The only difference in the board is that the LED at the back is like way, way longer. Other than that though, uh, they're interchangeable. That's gonna allow me to get my testing done. You wanna make sure that that contact strip uh, goes under the pin. Otherwise, um, you won't be able to run your trains at all. So that's very important. And I'm also going to test it on the bench just to be sure. So that sounds real good. So let's go try it on the track. Okay, let's see how it goes. Perfect. And then the other direction, reverse. Perfect. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to test the DCC only part of the build. So make sure you get the other one under there. You're definitely going to need that. Perfect. Once I got everything running, I'll put the shell back on. I believe that's how you're supposed to do it. You turn on your DC controller, your DCC controller, and then you put your engine on the track. And then we'll do a select local. And then put in the unit number, which for this unit should be uh, 5260. 6256 that's what i had in the notes uh, from the box 6256 enter and let's see what we got when that happens all i do is i go and i do a program track and that that usually works so I'll just go program track. It's a NCE that I'm using, incidentally. So program track. Enter. And then one standard. So manufacturer 129, I can figure out what that means. Decosure version 51, always good to know. I can probably download the instructions from the internet. And then set up address, yes. Short address, I'll put 003. And then long address 6256. And then enter. Activate this address, yes. And I'm just gonna keep going because that should be good enough. Should be good enough to go. So escape that. And then let's see if we can make this run. Oh yeah, very smooth. The 
and switch directions to the heads lights on and off oh what a sweetie I guess I'm ready to put the shell back on so I took a minute to look it up it's a Digitrax decoder so I'll be checking out see if I can get some instructions for it fits like a glove and now it's time to run some trains well I hope you enjoyed the video I certainly had fun making it for you See you soon.